Hi, Creek Spielers. It's Lafondios, and this is a player after action review for a play by post game, The Battle of Lumbenon, that was created and hosted by Chinleaf. I played a core commander on the Russian side. I'll walk you through what it looked like from my perspective and the decisions that we took and the lessons that we learned. The history here is that the Russians outnumbered the Germans early in 1914, early as an early part of the war, and in August they swept through and they pushed the Germans out of the uh, town of Gumbinen. Uh, you see here an image of the first army group under Renenkamp, who was actually in charge of the Russians then, and it was the commander-in-chief played by Hannibal in our uh, scenario here. So you see that the army groups came through, and historically the Russians pushed the Germans out of Gumbinen. So here was the plan. We had eight divisions organized into four army corps, uh, the the commander in chief had six divisions, five cavalry, one infantry that he could assign out. So in the yellow shape to the left, you see mine. He gave me one cavalry division, which was the second. So I had two infantry and one cavalry. The plan is to the right. You see a group that's under a commander named Smirnov, who was coming in directly from the east. His intent, or the commander's intent for him, was to trigger some sort of action. Uh, to get the Germans to head east while we took the main force, which I was in, which was down in the southeast, and using that bulge in our start line, go directly into Gumbenen. So it was a one-two punch where we were going to try to get some movement east to take forces out of Gumbenen and then take Gumbenen quickly. So that was the plan. As part of the, the large blob to the southeast, which is what the umpire called us uh, afterward, uh, we had this concentrated main body. I was on the northern portion. Here's my first set of orders. Um, I had them, the CAV, move forward and try to determine where the front line was, and the 25th and 27th Infantry move as well. You see on the left my orders, and I give the order for suppressive fire on contact. What was a very interesting part of this system was that Chen Leaf had us um, actually use artillery inventory, and we had 20 rounds of inventory per division for the game. So if we ran out of uh, artillery, that would, that would be because we'd overshot. So I have given the order for suppressive fire because that's one round use only. You can go up to three round, which is your destructive fire. So you would manage your artillery, and I thought that was a fun part of the game. Here's the actual situation from the after action re report from the uh, umpire. You can see there the Russian concentrated force to the southeast and then the smaller force to the east out uh, where Smirnov was. And then you can see that in the German set up, they had four units around Gumbenen, and they had five units up to the north, and their intent, as they reported back at, at the end of the game, was to try to determine which direction we were coming from. But as re And as a result, they spread out quite a bit. So if you look at Gumbenen itself, we had 10 divisions to their four right off the bat. So that was a positional um, advantage we had from, from the from word go. At 0800 game time, which was five turns later, we had rolled up on Gumbenen, We'd contacted some enemy, and my colleague Kastelinski was still in contact with the unit. If you look at the image at the top, the green square on the left-hand side, he was still in contact there. I knew that there was a unit from the screenshots. I knew there was a unit up with a black boundary, um, and that it had some reconnaissance out in front of it. And you see the screenshot that I got down at the bottom for that. So I ordered the 25th and 27th to proceed to attack that unit. But I wanted the cavalry to go north through that reconnaissance because I wanted to figure out if that reconnaissance was from that unit to the west or whether it was actually from a unit to the north. So I didn't know which was which, and I wanted to make sure that there was no larger force to the north there. Um, so that was my orders were over to the left. I used suppressive bombardment uh, at this point uh, to continue to kind of pin that unit down because I wanted to save my artillery inventory for the main force of the Germans. So you can see here, here's what happened. Uh, my, from the larger view, there was nothing to the north. So the cavalry discovered that. We found out that, that reconnaissance unit was pushed back. And uh, in doing that suppressive bombardment, we pinned that unit down. We turned it down to 70%. And um, in future turns, I would then use destructive bombardment to completely destroy that unit. So um, take a look now also out to the east. There's five German units against three Russian units, um, and we were getting reports from Smirnov in the East saying that he was outnumbered. So we knew that was happening. We didn't know the exact numbers of five versus three, but we also knew that it, we were really routing the Germans in Gumbenen. So this was our situation. So we had a decision to make. 
we knew that the forces in Gumbinnen, the German forces were routing out. So they were either surrendering or routing or moving out of town. And Kastelinski uh, was down there still in contact. And so I coordinated with Scheidemann and uh, my CIC and said, let me go east. And here was the thinking. Um, we could have taken that 10 to 4 advantage and just pushed into Gambetta, but we were still going to have to deal with that force to the east, and we might have ended up losing more men under Smirnov. So my thought was if we pushed east, east and prosecuted that battle more quickly, we'd save more forces of Smirnov. We had to fight that battle anyway, so letting them trit Smirnov down wouldn't have been as good as going out and dealing with it. Uh, more quickly. Uh, CIC agreed, Scheidemann agreed, and we turned east. So here was the orders to the east. Because Scheidemann was coming with me with all three of his divisions, I sent the 2nd Cavalry and the 27th only over there to handle that. And here was my thinking. I really wanted to apply all the artillery fire out there. So I took all my artillery, I, I cross-loaded artillery from the 25th to the 2C and the 27th. So they had the full measure of artillery inventory. Um, I knew Scheidemann had three divisions and I knew Smirnov was still alive because he was communicating with us. So I, I thought five more divisions, three of Scheidemann's and two of ours would work, uh, to keep, to sufficiently deal with that force. And I wanted the 25th who um, in my group had been uh, the most damaged to act as a screen uh, to make sure that nothing would surprise us by coming and linking up with those forces out there. So I chose to leave the 25th in place in a defensive position um, they would use a softening bombardment because they were lower on, uh, on, or on inventory. And you see there that the order on the left was I used destructive bombardment on those forces to the east. Uh, and it worked. We pushed those forces out. Uh, one, one division actually surrendered. And um, we were able to deal with that force in the east. And Smirnov survived. And, and uh, we kept as many of his troops alive as we could while in Gumbunin that position collapsed. And the Germans pulled out of Gumbunin and they pulled out to the north. Thus, we achieved the historical outcome of the battle, which was great. Um, so the lessons that learned, learned here that I noticed, uh, first of all, by maintaining concentration, we were able to defeat the enemy in detail. And what that means is we kept that blob to the southeast. We moved up. We had the four units in Gumbenin. We've destroyed that. And then we turned east with five divisions and we joined Smirnov and destroyed that force at an eight to five ratio in the east and drove them off. So by keeping that blob approach, we were able to defeat them in parts, to the west and to the east. We tend to think in lines in Creeksville because we do so much Napoleonic and so much American Civil War. So even when we're in brigades, we put brigade lines, etc. And so lines are okay uh, for concentrating fire in those periods. But really, lines can also be a natural bad habit because if you think if we'd have fought in a line as the Russians and spread all of our divisions out we wouldn't have had the ability to really catch the Germans in two groupings like that so maintaining concentration at times can be at the brigade at the at the second level of command in this case it was core uh, can be a really important thing to do um, we can find the plan to really one big decision. Once the main body made it to Gumbinnen, were we going to head west or were we going to head east? So the decision was simple, though it was hard to make because we had to make a, a call on it. Um, but we didn't have to coordinate a lot of different units. We didn't have to send a lot of telegrams. We didn't have to talk about individual um, you know, divisions. What we did is said, you know, I said to Scheidemann, you keep to my right, and he said, you stay to the north, and we said, let's go east, and we just basically did what we've been doing, but we headed east. So it made it very simple to execute, uh, or at least easier to execute. And finally, there was an idea that I had actually picked up from one of the Moltke problems, and it's not in the videos that I did, but it's, it was in the commentary underneath the problem where he talked about the reserve as a function of brigade positioning. So we like to think of a reserve as kind of two units up and one unit back, and the unit that's back is the reserve. And what Mulkey's idea was, and it actually played out in this scenario, is that your reserve is where you have excess force, even if that force is engaged. So we had 10 to 4 advantage in the West, and so we became Smirnov's reserve, even though we were using all those units to attack the units in the West. Smirnov, if he had found nothing in the East, would have been our reserve. He'd have come up. Uh, and it supported us in the Gumbinnen battle. So the point was, even though all the units were being used, there was an inherent reserve in where we were positioned. 
Uh, and again, going back to maintaining concentration, the concentration allowed for this virtual reserve to exist. And that was a very unbelievable coincidence that I just read this in the Mulkey material and then it actually played out in this game to where I could actually see it in action. So I now understand that concept a little bit more. So you always do want to reserve, but the reserve is not some division sitting in a town for the entire game waiting to potentially get an action. So think about that reserve more flexibly and you might come up with some interesting ideas. Hope this was useful. Uh, it was a player level after action review so there was no robots or anything like that. Chen Leaf did a great job putting the game together. Um, he, uh, I thought, prosecuted the turns very well and, and they were um, very timely, good deadlines, uh, nice after action review uh, uh, screens at the end. So, uh, fun game to play and uh, I hope the lessons uh, are something that can help you in your gameplay and we'll see you out there on the game board. Thanks so much.